think it is very important that we do not um, generate a fault line that would run across the Balkans. I think it is very important that uh, there is a continuity in the process of enlargement. And uh, the best way to, um, to generate this continuity is to make sure that the end of Croatia's negotiation coincides with the beginning of Serbia's. Uh, I think this is a very uh, powerful, both symbolic but also practical link that would make sure that um, there is no, uh, there's no pause, there's no break, and that uh, we don't let anybody become disheartened along the way. So uh, I think it is very, very important that there is no discrete gap and the process of enlargement when it comes to the Western Balkans once the Croatian joins. Serbia is not going to recognize Kosovo period, end of story. Serbia is not going to recognize Kosovo, period. Read my lips. Serbia has had now visa liberalization for one, more than a year and what we've seen with this whole discussion about borders and wanting to put border checks back in place in Europe and now also with visa liberalization some countries if they abuse the EU now says we will put visas back on so how do you feel about this development uh, regarding tr freedom of traveling and movement in the EU? Well I think that, uh, that uh, freedom of travel is uh, in inside Europe is uh, one of the biggest achievements uh, of Europe so far and uh, going back reversing on uh, on this um, in my opinion would amount to um, to a big defeat of some of the most uh, cherished if you will European values that uh, did materialize in the end in the process of uh, of creating a union um, I perfectly understand the concerns of governments of the European Union these are not easy times economically and uh, neighborhood some some uh, parts of the European neighborhood are right now um, very difficult places to live that result in a large number of people um, trying to leave those places and trying to enter the European Union and of course the massive inflow of, uh, of people is something that governments under the current economic conditions are not going to cheer uh, but inside the European Union um, to go back on those big achievements. I think it would be, a, in a way, a collective defeat of uh, some of the most fundamental values uh, which ended up being brought into uh, work, into practical work. There are many more that need to be uh, achieved that we only speak about but we haven't achieved yet. But this one was the one that we have achieved. And going back on it, I mean, I wouldn't want to see that happen. Um, the capture of Radko Mladic was uh, celebrated and applauded here in the EU, but uh, now there is uh, one more to catch. Uh, Hadic, wh when do you expect that to uh, happen? Well, 45 out of 46 indictees have been so far founded. They were apprehended, they were made... Uh, uh, available to the justice so that they can defend themselves against the charges brought against them. Um, Serbian government is um, going to continue fully cooperating with the Hague Tribunal until there are no more indictees at large. I, I don't think it's it's a good thing to speculate and when this may happen. We've been working hard, we've been fully cooperating in the past and we're going to continue fully cooperating until that is done. That's what I can say with confidence. And when do you think you will start accession negotiations? Well, I hope that they soon, I mean, it's, they start sooner rather than later. As I said, the end, of Serb, uh, the end of Croatia's negotiation can very symbolically and practically be 
tied up to the beginning of Serbia in order to assure continuity of the process of enlargement in the Western Balkans. I think um, it's in everybody's interest, Serbia is for sure, but also in the interest of the Western Balkans and, and the European Union uh, to, uh, to make sure that there are no stops, breaks, uh, artificial fault lines uh, running across European geography and Western Balkan is very much European geography.